Uh, if you're looking at the ether pad, there's going to be six uh, topics. It's going to be a little bit of a hard ass uh, move between these topics with this. The first one we'll see is the current state of access rules. And there's a long list of bugs that are posted out there. It's a groomed list of bugs that we have been fixing with access rules for the last two releases ever since. I mean, ever since Liberty actually, when we introduced it. So this is where things started messing up with access rules. So, well, and also, we decided to make a change so that uh, access rules weren't just, uh, we decided to make a change to the driver interface, and that's where a lot of things started to go wrong. Yeah. I don't know if we need to rehash that discussion. <coughs> Probably not. Yeah. So two levels of problems there. First thing was when we split shares into shared instances, we didn't account for all these access rules. We, you know, map to shared instances. Back then, we didn't have any use for these shared instances. A share was always a share just had one instance. Of course, when uh, Rodrigo started writing his migration code and then we started adding the application code, we started doing more and more of these problems. Specifically, the way we were representing errors and also how we were dealing it from that basis. And then in the uh, Metaka release, we went ahead and said, okay, we want a driver interface that can take bulk access to the right? So we would give it all the rules that, were that, that it was supposed to apply. But if it was a bunch of rules that it was to add newly, we would give it a lot of Say okay, here are the rules that you've got to add, or here are the rules that you've got to re uh, remove. But then here are the actual rules that you're supposed to have. Right. So this is what the interface looks like. It was pretty simple, except we thought it was pretty simple. Uh, and Bobby and uh, and Tiago were writing this word. It looked very obvious, but the way different drivers implemented it, the way it was implemented in the share manager and the access rule network was a root cause of again a list of so many things that we didn't anticipate. Uh, one of the things that we did remove uh, with access rules was the huge thing for us. Right? So when you have an access rule and you have a share, we, start, we, we began with saying that we're going to apply this access rule to this share and we're going to maintain the status of this access rule on this access rule itself. It's going to be called state. It, it was a, mo a model change that we had. When we said we're going to apply bulk access rule changes to share instead, shares, right? So we Remove the state field and we move that state field to the share itself. We said this is going to represent all the, whether there is the, all of the access rules have been applied properly or not. Right? And this brought us problems because when you were adding rules one by one, because we did change the driver interface to give bulk updates to the drivers, but we didn't change the uh, API. So users were still interacting with Manala and will continue to interact with Manala saying allow access to this share to this particular user or IP or something or remove access to this particular user or So that's the crux of the problem then. So we, we were taking atomic rule updates but trying to create this bulk and give it to the driver. And we were not waiting, that's not what we were, that's not the intent. But if you were hitting the, uh, the API with multiple requests, these would somehow get, uh, you know, bulked up and given to the uh, driver in bulk. Right. And so we had this mechanism where, where we would go uh, ask the driver to apply a bunch of rules, and when the driver returns, we would look into we would look and see if there were more access rules to be applied, then we would go ask the driver again. So we would loop over there and keep calling the driver again and again for as long as there are no more access rules. <coughs> that was good design, except we ran into the problem where we would send this request to the driver ask it to apply a, a bunch of rules, and then when new rules came in, we would perform this check and we would miss the new rules. We would set this access rule status to active, and these new rules would never get applied. Basically right. a race condition. A race condition, yeah, a, a, a pretty nice race condition, in the sense of if you were applying 100 access rules, maybe 20 made their way to the, uh, to, uh, to the back end, and 80 of them probably did, but you had this Weird status of the uh, the API saying all of them are applied. So, and this is an example of a case where we absolutely need locking or some kind of mutual exclusion in the API to obtain correct behavior, because the dance that's performed between the API service and the share manager involves both of them reading and writing to the state. And, and same just to piggyback on what you were saying yesterday, we should not hold a lock over the 
uh, cast call from the, just to be explicit, from the API to right. the, uh, the lock is just about state transition. Right, so we should rely on a database ING state or micro state or something yeah. for that. Right. So, what we went back to doing is, went back to the drawing board, standard is okay, what did we do wrong, and switched back the state to this, for instance, for access to the state. So if we put it back in the database right now, and it's, it's a pattern that we have not modified. So, as of new, then you still see this bug. So, Jotham, can you remind us why we need per instance access rules as opposed to per share? Okay, so when you have share instances or share or, or uh, share migration, right? Share instances are nothing but a share that can live on two hosts at the same time. As, as far as the user is concerned, they're not exposing share instances. Right. So the, uh, if, uh, if it's in case of replicas, your replica is here and your replica is here, but they're all part of the same share. Right? And, uh, <coughs> same with the migration. Right? So when you start migrating a share. Manila is going to, uh, the internal process is going to create a new share instance, do all of this magic, so you move the data and so And users will never see this other share But this is how we are, we are controlling how, we, how the internal logic works. Access rules are supposed to be you know, uniformly applied across all share instances. With the caveat that there are some, uh, you know, in replication, there is no, there is no sense in allowing access to, let's say, in DR, allowing access to a, a disaster recovery. There is no sense. It's not even exported. What's the point of uh, allowing access? So there are some caveats, but drivers deal with these implicitly. But when you have, but we don't we don't need anything in the database schema to support per instance access rules because access rules are still just on the share. We actually do. It will be really useful in case you require rules for your storage using specific drivers. <coughs> so you have several instances, and so you need to apply a new one. Yeah. And you can well, well, so you know you, you applied it or not. So tracking the status per instance makes sense to me, but having a rule per instance does not because the rule I, I think I think it's the other way around. Having a rule per share instance makes more sense. Why? Because of the fact that you're talking to the share instance atomically when it comes to the drivers. You you create a share and then you create a replica of the share. Right, so, so to the driver interface, it is a share, which is the active replica, mm -hmm. and there is another replica that's now being created. So it thinks there are two shares, right, to the driver. It but, is they, but they always have the same rules. They always have the uh, same rules, that's true, but how would I reconcile the fact that I've already allowed access to this? I may not have yet, yet allowed access. To you need to track the status on a per instance basis. Yeah, but, 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 but you don't need to track the rules on a per instance yeah, basis. Yeah, apply the rules because <coughs> What, what Dr. Chase just described, you may have applied access to an instance, it's the same, you may have applied access to a rule, but not the other one, you are sending them in bulk. Mm -hmm. So you can have a, a per instance status table. It, it don't, don't we have times where one's read only and <coughs> one's read write because we're copying? And right, but that, that never gets <coughs> written into the database. That, 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 that's something that... So that's that, why that, we did this stuff. Well, the, in a very old we version, lost, in a very old version, version Rodrigo actually did that. He actually put it in the database <laughs> that, that this is a read-only one, and we said, no, we should not be doing that. The manager can compute a runtime that the instance that I'm updating is actually the source of a, of a migration, and therefore I need to uh, flush it. Or then I don't know why we need all this, but I think we're close. So what's the next step? Are we going to? Right. I just wanted to, to talk through whether we needed this or not. So. I don't. I haven't heard a convincing reason why we need per instance rules. We may need per instance statuses. So if the rule if the rule had a table of status, I mean a list of statuses associated with it, instead of a single one, another table. Well, we well, have we have the share, the share access rules, and then the share instance yep. access rule status table that would have a, uh, the key would be the share instance. We would have two keys: the share instance, the access rule, and then its status. So the three column table. What do we do with replication when there's a copy that we can give read-only access to? Just do that's that. another. That's another thing the manager should be able to, to compute a runtime <laughs> status. No, it, it will should say uh, when I'm updating the status, or the access rules on the uh -huh. status, I know that it's a secondary of a replication relationship, and so I'm going to having its own set of rules to read-only. Because yeah, uh, the user has no way to say update 
the access rules on this instance only, right? Yeah. He can only say access rules are on the share. So from a database schema perspective, they should only be on the share. From database schema perspective, yes, but our code for application and migration has other requirements. It has to, it needs to have more granularity. Uh, and go to latest patch uh, also fixes the mapping. There was an, an incorrect mapping that I saw that you fixed in your latest patch. I, I didn't know which which one. I, I think it's the state map it to instances instead of to shared. Yes. So uh, as of now, there is there the, the way the DB schema is arranged is you have the share access rules and share access rules, and the share access rules have an aggregate status, which is what is I mean, I look at all my instance access rules. If anyone is an error, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm going to be an error. Anyone's out of system. You're wrong. talking about the, the model, right? Okay. Schema. All right. If I heard schema. Okay. The, the, the TV model. Right. So it gives me the level of granularity to differ access rules uh, updates with respect to each individual share instance. That, I think, is essential for share application. Uh, I would have to think more about what is this like. We just moved it to share access rules. Well, are, are we talking about the access rules or the status now? The status itself. So okay. you're okay. saying we would The access rules, I have, I've heard no reason that we need multiple copies of them. We don't need one. And we don't maintain multiple copies. All right. So it's, it's, it's this DB level, level magic that we have. That we have a, mo a model for share access. Right? What is okay. the status rule? You know, what is the type? Pool, <coughs> And then there is this per instance thing which has a reference to this. So it's okay. like shares and share instances. So, so walk, walk us through why we need the per, per rule statuses again. So the per rule status is something for the API. So when, when the user lists the, uh, the access rules, we're just looking at this share access rules. We're not looking at the instance access rules at that point. So there is this, I mean, so there is a property that's said over there that says, okay, read all the instance access rules, get, get but, but, but what problem does it solve to have the, the per? The problem, the problem was that it's not only for the API. It, it, the, another problem with the previous, the previous design was that it was very hard to detect whether you needed to perform a refresh. Because uh, every time a new rule is created, ideally it should be tagged as a new rule, a no, not applied rule. And what was happening is that uh, it was just changing uh, the the, the per instance, the share instance statuses to out of sync or updating, updating multiple some other statuses. Yeah. Uh, but updating multiple ones is fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway. Putting it two days before the RC. Anyway, <laughs> we we came up I with. I feel bad for Tiago. Not here. <laughs> <laughs> we came up with this uh, with this ideal concept that uh, a new rule should be tagged as a new rule. So the, we couldn't achieve that with the previous design, and that's why the refresh mechanism was so flaky. And we need that information per instance and per rule because yes. it's going to be a, a push to the different instances at different times. Exactly. exactly. Yes, that's what it says. Yeah. Okay. I just so, want to make sure everyone understands why we're doing this. Yeah. Okay. So to, to answer the previous question, the the access state in the in the access model, which is visible to the user, is in fact the aggregate of the all instances of, of that access. Right. So we're not actually storing a per access rule status; it's a no. per access rule per instance status. Yes. yes. And we aggregate it. Yes. So as we said, there is there's going to be a state transition. This is this is going to be uh, pretty simple. Every new rule for the, every instance starts out with saying I'm a new rule. The state, the state is exactly going to be new. And then when, when it's going to go into the driver process, right? So the, the, there's an access helper in incomplete isolation. It gets an RPC call, meaning the share manager gets the RPC call, sends it to the access helper, the access rule access helper goes and picks up all the all the rules that it needs to apply. And when it does pick it up, it's going to cast all the new rules to apply. And then pass it down to the driver interface. Right? So when you are, uh, there are no new rules passed directly as new to the driver interface. So it's going to be applying. The, the transition is going to be applied. And then when the driver interface comes back, all the applying ones, if they have not changed their state by the time the driver is returned, are going to be cast to active. 
because the drivers told us that it's I think there was one of the questions I asked you before, what possible state, because you had the comments in your code, I think you replied that, that I, I asked the question and you replied but I don't remember the answer, so well, I'll ask you again. You could say a driver applies, uh, uh, applies this access rule, right, and when the driver is doing it, it's good, oops, sorry, I don't need this guy to have access, did I? Right? So oh, okay. You can delete the rule before it's done applying. Yeah. Okay. And then you have to, and then the, the manager needs to see that, and then and go then back in and remove like, the rule. Wouldn't simplify things if we do not <coughs> allow that? If it's applying, if you gotta wait for it to be applied to be deleted, like we can only delete rules that are either new or uh, access or error. What purpose would it solve? Or not? Just simplicity. It, 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 I mean, this was uh, like a nice feature to have, but uh, doesn't it add a lot of complexity to the code? Okay. Well, no, and it's it, this. Is, I think this is the reason that we decided we wanted for accessible status is, is because of these kinds of things. If if we do as Rodrigo says and basically prevent you from modifying a rule that is not applied yet, we could actually not. We would we would no longer need the per access rule status to go back to. One giant status, for instance, um, if you didn't have to deal with. No, but that is another concern that we've got on the nation is that the current code does not have any anything blocking the API, so it accepts everything. So right. you don't have a well, that's you don't a back, have that's concerns a anymore. Compatibility thing. Cause that's right. how it was in in. Uh, in right. So because when we uh, when we put in the uh, access code, and we said. If there is some bad rule, like you give a six access rule to somebody that can't understand this, and then you set this rule to an error, the share instance access rule status goes to error. If you're running a script to say give access to this user, this user, this user, this user, the, the, the following access rule or updates are, are thrown away from the API saying, oops, there is, this instance is an error status, and as part of the group, the abstraction that it did say this instance is an error status, uh, it, 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 you can't apply anything. Yeah, let's say he he does what I just suggested of uh, adding not not doing the the applying one, just rejecting. Uh, then that would be an if condition in the API which starts blocking and would introduce more risk conditions. So it's better this way because it's a condition in the manager, not in the API. What could go wrong? What do you mean? So, so, so I didn't get it. So it means if one if one access rule is with state error, you do not accept any more? Yes. That right is now, that is, that is, that is, this is the current behavior, right? And it, 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 you don't want to change this. Yes. But no, we do want to change that. You do want to change that. You want to change that. Yes. You should be able, you you should to, be able to, to, yes. to You should be able to add a bunch of rules, and if one of them happens to be wrong, it's all right. the other ones should still get applied. Exactly. Yeah. It could be yes. two people adding rules. One person is a typo, someone else is busy adding yes. users, and the whole thing goes yeah. And it makes yeah, no sense to block yeah. all the access rules for share just by one error. So that's another benefit of per rule status is that in an error condition you know which one has the error. Well, that comes with a caveat. So if you hit your API very hard and you, you apply a bunch of rules, if, if when, the, when the driver is applying them, we won't let the driver get two calls at once. That's a promise that one is going to make which uh, or not. Right? Right. So we're going to fix that uh, based on and but if the driver doesn't get these calls, these rules are actually there in the database. So the driver finishes, and then the manager is going to look in the database for any more new rules. And it's going to bunch all of these new rules together and send them down again. Mm -hmm. So if something happens in that part, if you say, oh, I don't understand this one rule, right? This, all of these new rules are going to be set to error. So there's nothing you can do about you know, identifying which exact rule went to error. But yeah, of course, that blob of new rules. That's not necessarily that. true. As long as as long as we provide a way for drivers to tell the manager which which rules have errors and which rules don't have errors, then it's it's up to the driver to be as clever as it wants to to figure out if if it was just one rule that had the error or if they all have errors or. But, but the point else. is that, you, that the driver can't signal if just one rule fails, right? So you well, that's something that we can change. Can change. So, okay. uh, Ramana had some code uh, mm -hmm. to return model updates from the uh, yeah. access rule method. That I was asking about, which may be 
for example, what I'm saying. So, people, your driver can tell us if there's some booth that it can't apply. That way we can dispose that, that one booth. Right, so, so if you get a call from the manager, add 10 rules, yeah. and then and the way your driver works is it makes one API call with 10 rules and your back end says error. You can either return back to the manager while well, all 10 of them have errors, or you could retry them one at a time inside the, inside the or, or the, the driver could have its own error checking if it knows what limitations the back end has. It could filter out errors itself before you even pass them. I mean, it, it, it would be up to the driver at that point to figure it out. Yep. Um, and then all yeah, you just need to return a bitmap for the ones that succeeded and the ones that failed. Yeah. yeah, which is really important that uh, there is no let's say invalid state so that the driver already applies a, a access rule and sets the whole bug to error and you have one active rule and you can't see this in money. That is something that you exactly. really have to avoid. And that's already happened. Yes. Yes. So that's this is one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So 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 when you do add a back rule you at least know what, what's there and what's not there. Yeah. And so the same thing, so as, as you go back, <coughs> if you're trying to deny a root, it's going to start out with, uh, it, it could have been active error, whatever state it was in, it would go into denying, and then when, when, when the driver picks it, when the manager picks it up to give it to the driver, it's going to be set to denying, right? and then when it comes down, we're going to delete the root from the database, soft delete the root from the database. That's exactly what you know. The transitional status that we're adding right now. The question again remains do we care about exposing these uh, transitional statuses to the end user? In other words, do we create a view that maps those to the, the ones we had before in the view? Um, <coughs> that's a good question. It, it, what the end user needs to know is whether the rule got to the back end or not. Um, if it didn't get to the back end, it doesn't really matter why, right? It's not there. If it did get to the back end and, and it's, it was an accident or something, you, you want to know, oh, now I accidentally granted access to somebody I didn't want to. So now I, I need to go delete that, that rule um, to avoid you know, a security problem. I mean, but uh, they're transitional. So the only change uh, is the transition. So I'm trying to figure out what the what user the user needs to, to know if it's not there. The user needs to know if it is there. If it's yeah, if it's transitional. It makes for a good user experience in my opinion because when I was deploying this, I was running to a hundred answers for the same. Uh, it would all transition from you to applying to active. So it was. Yeah, I don't see any reason to hide the information, and if we have it, I think it'd be best if it was so fast that you never saw it and you wouldn't need it. But the reality is, it could be stuck a little slow, a little so then yeah, you want to see it. Yeah. All right. So it would be a micro version, and we would map these states back without having uh, this thing. And put on backward compatibility issues, and then they're going to use this. But I want to go back to Rodrigo's question about do we block? updates if, if something is in a transitional state and you said no because it's, it's just simple if condition and I think I agree. It, 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 <coughs> we obviously have to have the per instance per access rule status and once you have that it doesn't cost us very much at all to let you remove a rule before it's even done applying. Let me ask another question. Uh, at what point did you change it to applying? It is when the access helper gets to the man Okay, when the man so at that moment it acquired a lock. Yes, it has already acquired a lock. And uh, it's thrown to applying the rules. So if, if, it, if it, the, the user sees the state is applying and he wants to deny at that point, the manager will need to get the, the, the deny request and they remove the rule because at that point, if it's no. applying, we can we can already assume that it's going to be applied. No, you can assume that it's going to be applied. You can also assume that it's going to be applied. The API service for a cancel button. The API service would, would would get the would get the request to deny, and it would take the lock, and it would just change it from applying to denying, right? 
that's flying. The API service is not going to change. I'm a, I'm a bit concerned because I tested this kind of scenario with Tiago when we were back in, uh, was it Dhaka working on this? Um, and um, the problem was that uh, I was using some slips in the code uh, to, to make the, it take longer. And uh, it ended up like uh, you get a, a request and you're applying and then you may have to deny the rule, but uh, it does not does not know really if it was applied or not. And after everything is completed, they start to look okay. If you go to the to the export file and uh, check if the rule is there, it was there. Oh, okay, that is exactly the point you asked. Is the API going to set the deny status? Okay, that that solves that. Yeah. The, 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 the API is going to pick up that request as it comes before it hits your and then put a nine. Then it hits your sleep. Goes into the shell as manager. I, I'm going to root feed that root as the nine. And it comes back. Oh, okay. Before before invoking the drive. Before invoking the driver. Oh, okay. In yes. that case, so, that case would be possible. Before invoking the driver. Yeah. yeah, right. So it's, it's, it's already down inside the driver. The API service flips the rule from applying to denying. And then when it comes out of the driver, the manager sees that something has changed and it loops what, back What around. if it's after? The request comes after the driver has applied, but the rule hasn't changed from applying to active. What if it's after it has not changed? So that's why we have the dropping off. Yeah. I mean, so if you're trying to make this a transition that, that exists. Oh, okay. The, the one responsible for making that transition is the manager, which is within the lock. Yeah. Right. Every, every state transition has a lock because this is okay. a rate condition. Right. So oh, as long okay. as you put a lock around the transition, you, you know okay. whether it happened before or after, and you can okay. make the right decision. When this was brought up in Austin, it did wonder why you needed that reader writer box. Because it's in two cents. It is a reader writer lock. You take a lock to read the database, you take a lock to write the database. So uh, you can take a look at the patch. We are quickly going to transition to the next thing if, if you have no questions. Because we, have, we, have, we just have 10 minutes. Any other questions? You can play with the patch as it is today. Uh, there are some more points that I didn't bring up, such as... Is there a spec that shows the state, all the states in the, in the transition between them? I was writing one. Yeah, I was going to say, this is the kind of thing where I think being able to visualize the state diagram and all each transition and when it happens and why would, would help people be less confused. And if you can ASCII make it, art concept. yeah, I was going to say ASCII art in the code would be outstanding, but I know that's hard to do. Nothing to do ASCII art. And there, there are tools that will convert yeah. your flowchart to ASCII art. Oh, ASCII art is okay. No, I'm not doing that. We don't need to change it, but we do need to make sure that we get per per rule error reporting. Yeah. But that will be a change to the driver interface. <coughs> so I'm extending one of these. Yeah. So that the driver. Yes. Yeah. So that's the driver. Yeah. Okay. So uh, moving on. The next topic is uh, adding access rule types to share protocols. Uh, okay, before we in the more controversial topic, I think I'm going to switch to uh, what supporting IP would mean in Okata, uh, specifically because we may not be discussing this afternoon uh, about it. There, there's already a spec, there's some code, there's uh, a bundle of client code as well testing this. IP access rule will mean IPv4 and IPv6. So, uh, drivers implementing IP access rules, you keep that in mind because that's a goal for Okata. That we want to support it, I think it's Who's goal? I mean, I, I would like it, but I mean, it, it's not a community goal. I thought you said it's a community I mean, it's not a. The, the TC now has a goals thing. Oh. Like they said community wide goals propelled by the TC, and IPv6 is on their list, but it's not an Okada goal. Uh, how, how, okay. So a goal for all projects, I mean, not only money. Right, the, the only goal that the TC is pushing for Okada is complete elimination of any Oslo incubator code. 
and and that's already done for us. So, but within Manila and their cut of time frame, would the main problem be are any drivers going to have problems with that? Yeah. I mean, the, because because the core code is relatively well understood at this point, but you know Clinton's given it pretty good scrutiny and so on. I mean the. Um, I have we, earlier. We, and, we should find know, out by the end of Okada whether any driver cannot do IPv6. We should just figure that out. Uh, we don't want surprises on that front, right? To to invest a lot of effort in getting it ready and then find out where. Well, hold on. What, what does it mean to not be ready? Like I'm not sure, and that's why I'm. I'm I suspect thinking. that we will officially support it and treat anything that doesn't work as a bug. Well, just just kind of being there, explicit there was, about. There was nothing on that time. <laughs> so similarly, I'm sure there are other drivers that assume that this is always a be an IPv4 access. And so that means we So, I mean, we can say it's a bug, but if we ship with the bug at the end, um, yeah, and it was easy to go avoid, that would, it would be nice to, you know. And it might be a you know, back end bug, not not something that the driver maintainer can fix, something that the company's gotta fix on their on their array. It might not be an issue. I'm just I'm no, trying no, to flush out whether it is the, the way you would so, so let's say you I have a back end that doesn't drive to V six yeah. because I'm living in the nineties. Yeah, right? yeah. Um the, the driver would be responsible for detecting whether it's an IPv four or an IPv six rule and just and putting the IPv six rules into an error state yeah. and saying, I can't right. do that, it's an error. Yeah. So, so I'm not saying I'm not saying it's a hard conceptual problem. I'm I'm saying um, in the course of talking about this, if it's not a, a, a overall community goal and we decide it's a, a Manila goal, then people just need to get a heads up and they, yeah. they need to go check early and and figure out what they so, what their action plan is. And if we figure out we've got drivers that are living in the 90s, <coughs> back is living in the 90s that can't do that, do at some point we need a capability thing so that. User experience when you create a share and you've got multiple backends is not. Sometimes it works, sometimes it fails because you happen to land on that one. Yeah. I would rather have the discussion after we know who the right. Yeah, who, who so that do it because they don't. don't, 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 don't I, would, I would be very surprised if anyone can't do IPv6 today. And that's what I'm saying. I think by the end of Rokata, we should at least have that answer so we know what we're dealing with. Yeah. So I would. Know, one exception about the. <laughs> Well, I would say not by the end of a pod, if it's something we're going to do in a pod, we'll find out next week. Right. But I didn't well, one question I have about the IPv6 and the uh, uh, role access. So currently, you know, we maybe if we, the driver can support to create the IPv6 uh, interface, but if the, I'm not sure, as a role access, for example, NFS is to also have IP. The interval location? No, no, as a share access to the NFS share. As except to another share, it allows the IP host IP address. So yeah. is well, it today it does not. So we have limited our API in the sense of checking uh, bits in that. So this is not allowed by the driver. So we're, we're going to change it to allow IPv6 at the API level. Yeah, we're going to change it. Uh, that's going to happen. But my, my only thought was let's, let's, let's ask like next week. Just tell everybody that's happening next week and say, check your driver, make sure, let us know if there are any issues. So first we can ask right now, does anyone have a problem with IPv6 support on their back end? That they it want it to looks to me like them? the three part did, but it might be a documentation problem. Right? Yeah, that's what I thought. It, like it might not actually support it? <coughs> right. Okay. So then you can look into that. Who's maintaining that? Um, no one was on the meeting last no, night, Ravi, like, Chandra. So okay. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I can help figure that out. I, I remember, yeah, we'll figure out who it is. Yeah, so I'm not suggesting we spend a lot of time talking about this right now. I'm just saying so let's, let's poll and figure it yeah, out. We have an action item to send out a mail list. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's how we'll handle it. Yeah, list. I, yep. there was, there were, you already sent out a mailing list item, and I made sure that those guys saw it so that yeah. they know about it. Thank so you. So we plan to make it uh, required feature, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, there will be weird situations when you have a backend that only has an IPv4 export because no one bothered to set up IPv6 exports, and then you do an IPv6 access rule, it'll be kind of worthless. Yeah. But it'll still be expected to succeed. We can add a scenario that's in a scenario that's a very nice. 
part of the IPv6 system. Yeah, I mean, but there's a lot of other things that are needed, like IPv6 support on the client, IPv6 support on the server, I, you know, some sort I of mean, IPv6 network. I mean, if we link it with a capability that would make more sense than being so flexible, having it one be a IPv6. capability, it should... Well, Mark just suggested being I, a capability. I'm quite sure that the Docker driver doesn't work. For instance, just, I remember there is code with ours. Just in my right, but that—that's a bug in the driver that, that, can, that, that can be right. fixed. Yeah, there's, there's no fundamental limitation that that's prevents right. us from getting IPv6 working everywhere. Yeah, just that's right. So anyway, I would prefer we don't have this capability thing that says who can do it, who yeah. can. I would prefer it's a bug and it gets yeah. fixed. Yeah. 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 I just don't know yet yeah. how. Bad yeah, but it, it would mean that we, uh, and, uh, when there is one driver that can't support it, then we have to pull them off. Pull them off. I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> What about our network drivers? Standalone network driver? <coughs> that is some also something that we have to check. I so so let's collect the data. I mean, it seems to me we need to got some other things to cover, and we, we should just collect the data and, and, and talk about it. Yeah, and then we can figure out we don't have a problem. The only access to support. I just wanted to bring this up because maybe it's easier depends on it. And we have three drivers that do not support read only access rules, at least by documentation. Not sure if there's anyone presenting those drivers here, but just wanted to point out that this is there today. Like there are a couple of uh, that have cluster of S drivers, and there is the HP bar driver. The HP one's fixed. It's fixed. Okay, so the documentation is fixed. Okay, and the that have cluster of S driver. Ramana, do you know? Do we have bugs on that? We need to raise them. If you really think it's a documentation bug or a code bug? No, the IBM one has a documentation bug on that. I've been told it actually supports it. Works. Oh, yeah. We have to the driver or to the back end? Oh, okay. I don't know. It's a business decision. Yeah. <laughs> I, I work on it instead. I mean, in, in, the long run, in the long run, we, we want a scenario test that creates a share, gives read-only access, and tries to write, and observes that it fails. And then if if the driver doesn't implement the feature, they'll fail that test. And, yeah. we'll yeah. and I know of a couple of drivers that have gone through the, oops, my share was wide open to the world until the first mm -hmm. access rule came along. Mm -hmm. And but that could easily be caught by another scenario test. And right. that's, so. yeah, that's one that we should have, because it's obviously an easy mistake, the way some of the, drive, some of the backends work. Yeah, where it's implied open. So let, let's just get the scenario test in there. Those stress tests will start failing it. We'll push the question and we fix yeah, it or throw it away. The read only? Yeah, everyone's supposed to support read only. Well, and just looking at the documentation, because things can go hard without starting online migration. Why I'm starting one Yeah, it, that's what, one of the reasons read only is a required feature. Okay, and uh, I'm glad we're not getting access to groups. Right. Yeah, so we need access all that yeah. uh, right now. We need oh. to remove that. <laughs> there, are, there are a bunch of drivers there. We did right. say in using our deadline, but we were kind of lax about that, I guess. Remind me what this is. Yeah. So we have a fallback. They will not leave fallback and access to <coughs> access as well, which says, okay, so you don't implement update access. So I'm going to bunch these all six of these don't have it? Yes. Yeah, community also supports the uh, update success. I was looking at the board. Unity, yeah, Unity also supports update so support. Just Unity or what about Iceland and VMX? Uh, VMX don't support that yeah, because we didn't update uh, the, the driver. Okay. I mean, uh, the, 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 is something you can implement in the driver or you cannot be done? Yeah, I can be done. Just the okay. just the other. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was supposed to be on the project. I would have made more noise about this if I had realized some of them. So that, yeah, we need to get the fallback out. Um, so I, so all three teams. Are you responsible for all three of those platforms? No, I'm just the VX and Unity. Who does Isilon? I so maybe I can talk with Shin and okay. uh, yeah, push uh, Isilon to, yep. to to implement the updates access to if you are. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll make sure no. I'm getting those about it. <coughs> <coughs> I'm not sure who would be, but it's no uh, <coughs> one other. There's, 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 
Yeah, there's no maintainer for that. Um, <coughs> Brian's here. Huh? Oracle's there. Not in the room right now, but he, he's here this week. Brian was working on his Oh, no, I thought you were saying Zia. Or no, HDFS and Zia are both I'm sorry. on the shit list. Okay. So, yeah. But the ZFS, we can maybe bump into Brian. Okay. Okay, uh, so are we going to have a uh, decision like we're going to boot drivers that don't don't implement update access in, up to Okata, until the end of Okata? I, I think we have to. It's the only way we're going to get forward progress here. Yeah. So, so, so I, I'll, I'll, I'll find the maintainers individually and email them and say, get this done or you're out. You do so, so who's doing HDFS right now? Nobody. No. I know. So, so here's the pragmatic side of that. Is that, yeah, you want you can kick them out because nobody's maintaining it, but it doesn't really do Manila any good to get rid of HDFS. So let let let's think about constructive but, ways to no, what, what, know, what, maybe maybe get a what, the good thing it. that it does is it lets us remove this old fallback. That, that's that's that for I understand it makes the code cleaner. I'm saying We're, from a pragmatic standpoint, I don't think it does the Manila the project any good to have it no longer support <laughs> HDFS. But at a certain point, they HDFS the code will cleaner, stop working. I, I don't understand. Want to so I'm, I'm just yeah. suggesting maybe in an offline conversation, you know, seeing if we can. I mean, I think probably a number of us have a have an interest in Manila being able to say, that, and obviously it would actually work. Having it actually work would be great. But being able to say Manila is a cool project, and you can, you can do HDFS driver. So let's try to find somebody. Well, where are the users that care? Yeah. Well, I know. Well, I think there's some Sahara, you know, we put people up on, yeah. your company and my company put people up on stage saying um, Manila works with Sahara with HDFS. And if it's just a big myth, then it's a big myth, then let's, yeah, let's, yeah, tell, yeah. It, let's tell everybody that. But we could just move the fail back to the HDFS driver, right? Yeah, we could, we could do that. There are some drivers that have actually taken that up, allow access, deny access, converted them, and paid access forms. It, it may be possible for someone who's not too familiar with it to just change the HDFS driver to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're doing That's it today to make it. Anyone can do that. We're like, okay, we just move it. Yeah. You can find about it. If the driver can keep limping along, I'm happy to keep it in the tree. But like, I'm at just, some uh, point, just suggesting a bit need a, an expert to uh, actually maintain it. What we could do is just uh, finding a driver plugin interface that everybody uh, that does not have a CI system not following everything, but just pushing that out of the repo. But can we can just let's say have them uh, um, somewhere in a different repo and just register the plugin and that's it. So it should be a big We're issue in the discussion. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you shouldn't just do it, and others. I, I understand. understand them. I just, I'm a fan of plugins because we are flexible to also add drivers that, that might be just for our cases. But, but Manila needs to be able to evolve its driver interface. We don't want to have a locked down driver interface. Uh, yeah, okay, that's right. And, and moving moving drivers out of the tree makes it very hard to make forward progress on the driver interface. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. So the last thing. On this, this is something that we're not talking about because the fact that it's here five minutes, but I just wanted to uh, let you know that access groups is something that people have been brought up again, again and again and again. I think a steel concept at this point, no one's interested, I think, is wrong the idea. Why no one is interested? So I had request it, right? It's just, you know, it was, um, no, I never heard this song. <laughs> <laughs> Not this child. It was a feature request. Bro. It, was a it was a feature request from uh, Thomson Reuters. Oh. And they, they stopped caring about it a while okay. back. It's something a real data entry operator is going to care about someday with a long list of users. It's not something we care about much here. Automatable outside. Automatable, yeah. Outside of the hell. Right? Let's not spend time on No, no. It, it, there, are, there are very interesting things that can be done if yeah. we fully implement that feature, but no one's screaming loud enough, and it, it's a lot of work. Okay. And it's a That's lot of work of, on the UI as well. UI and CLI. Oh, yeah. It's a ton of work. The reason that I ask is because with all these changes that we're making to the TV, and we're, I mean, Rodrigo is asking if we can make it open enough for access groups. I don't want to think about it. You know, it's something that we're not. 
So, Rodrigo, your interest is, is just not painting ourselves into a corner if we do need to do it in the future? You yeah. don't have a concrete... Yeah, like uh, right now. if suddenly we decided that we need access groups, we sure. have to redesign the whole thing again. I don't, I don't want that. Yeah, yeah. And we are being to maintain that one. All right, uh, sorry for stepping over. We have five minutes break. We have, a, um, we have a three minute break. Can I, can I have another, uh, another question? In fact, that maybe we'll transition to the next topic. Um, regarding what the data access, um, back, uh, back when we were adding update access support uh, for HDS drivers, we noticed that several, uh, several bugs could be captured when we effectively try to run the scenario test or manually testing because some drivers that uh, uh, implement update access but they just test the API in CI, not, not really scenario test, they're not mounting mm -hmm. any, any share in, in an instance. So uh, I would like to, to just suggest uh, we do something about it like uh, adding Require, requiring uh, scenario tests in, in the sure. this Are we going to cover this afternoon? Next section, I think. I think it's the next section. Not sure.